Hey, praise the Lord. Greetings to you in Jesus' name. This is Brother Clinton. It's the fifth day of the week, the fifth day also of January, the year of our Lord, 2017, 5777. You know, there are many of you who have written to me recently, and especially over the last few months, and asked me about hearing the voice of God. And, you know, the scripture says that those that are of God hear his voice. And so, therefore, there are a lot of people that logically assume that if they're not able to hear God's voice, that they don't know him, and they're waiting to hear an audible voice from God. And though I will not say that it's not possible for us to hear an audible voice from God, because God is well able to speak to his people, and he does speak to his people, and that's what prophecy is all about. Um, still, there are a lot of you out there who have been kind of attacked with fear because you haven't heard a voice from God in the form of something that he would have you to prophesy uh, or uh, any other word that he would speak to you outside of the scripture. And even just the other day at the butcher shop, when I was talking to the man there at the butcher shop, he asked me about hearing the voice of God. And I explained to him what I'm about to explain to you. If we'll open up the scripture to the gospel according to John in the 10th chapter, I want to read verses 1 through 6 for you. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, what does this mean, verily? Verily, it's a word that we don't really use in English anymore very much. Uh, but we do use the word very. Okay, So verily is, of course, a form of that word. Verily means surely, truly. Um, to say something is good means that it's good. To say something is very good means that it's more than just good. It's very good. Okay, So the word very is a word that puts emphasis on something. All right, a word that magnifies something. And when he says, verily, verily, I say unto you, really the word that he said was, amen, amen, I say unto you, amen. Which, in, in, in our language, in the English language, verily means, this is true. Okay, I tell you the truth. Pay attention. Truly I say unto you, assuredly I say unto you. He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Right? But he that entereth, excuse me, but he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Okay. They didn't understand what Jesus was talking about, but yet they were sitting there listening to his words, and they heard his words. They just didn't understand what he meant. What did he mean? Well, I'll tell you. Let's go back to Deuteronomy, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 5. This is a reiteration of the Ten Commandments. Okay? No, yes, Deuteronomy chapter 5, and then we'll go to, some, to one other place in Deuteronomy. Hallelujah. So in Deuteron Deuteronomy chapter 5, starting with verse 25, this is after God had finished speaking the Ten Commandments to the people of Israel from the top of the mountain. Um, let's start in verse 24. And ye said, Behold, the Lord your God hath showed us his glory and his greatness. And ye said, Behold, the Lord our God. Okay, Behold, the Lord our God hath showed us his glory and his greatness. And we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. We have seen this day that God doth talk with man, and he liveth. Okay, and before that it was known to them, to everyone, that if God speaks to you, you're going to die, because no one can be in the presence of God and hear his voice and live. But they had seen that day that God spoke to them and they lived. Now therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of the Lord our God any more, then we shall die. Who is there of all flesh that hath heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of the fire as we have and lived? Go thou near, they said. The people, the children of Israel said to Moses, Go thou near and hear all that the Lord our God shall say, and speak thou unto us all that the Lord our God shall speak unto thee, and we will hear it and do it. And the Lord heard the voice of your words, Moses said, 
when ye spake unto me. And the Lord said unto me, I have heard the voice of the words of this people, which they have spoken unto thee. They have well said all that they have spoken. All right, now keep that in mind. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 18. In the 18th chapter of Deuteronomy, starting with verse 17, God was speaking to Moses, and he said, And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. See, that was where we left off in the conversation in chapter 5, right? They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. All right. Who is that prophet? It is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Jesus of Nazareth. He is that prophet. You see, now let's go back to verse 17. It says, And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. Pardon me. They have well spoken that which they have spoken. Why did God say that? God spoke to his people, Israel. And he didn't speak to them so that they would be afraid. He spoke to them so that they, well, yes, so that they would fear him, but not so that they would be afraid of him. He spoke those things to them so that they would know and keep his covenant. But they were afraid, and they said to Moses, you go talk to him and tell us what he says. We don't want to hear his voice anymore lest we die. God said to Moses, they have well spoken that which they have spoken. Why? Because God had planned from the very beginning of the world, before the foundation of the world, to send his son, Jesus Christ, in the middle of the days, in the midst of the years, and be the savior of the world and the prophet that he had ordained. And he had planned already to raise up a prophet from among Moses' brethren and put his words in his mouth. He had already planned that. And so the people of Israel were fulfilling his word in making this request. And he said, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, Moses. And I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Let's go back to John chapter 10. Verse 4. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Who is the shepherd? Well, you're going to say Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and you're correct. But... The answer is greater than that. Let's go to Ezekiel, chapter 26. No, 36, I'm sorry, chapter 36. Ezekiel, chapter 36. No, could it be 26? Pardon me. Pardon me, just for a second. No. 34. Ezekiel, chapter 34. Pardon me, just had a little short circuit in my spiritual memory. Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 11 and 12. The scripture says, For thus saith the Lord God. Okay, there could be no question about who this is talking about. The Lord God. Right? He says, Behold, I, even I, he says it twice, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. This is something that a shepherd would say. Only a shepherd would say, I'm going to search my sheep and seek them out, right? For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. Let's go back to John chapter 10. Verse 4, And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Who was speaking here? Was it the Son of God? Well, yes, in a sense, his mouth was moving and he was speaking the words, but who was speaking? It was the Almighty God, the Lord God Almighty. Because he, even he, came to search out his own sheep. And then in the 16th verse, he said, And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. He was talking about the Gentiles. But he didn't say the word Gentiles because he was in the midst of his Jewish people, and that hadn't been revealed yet. Even though it was written in the Scripture, it hadn't been revealed. So he didn't say the Gentiles, but he said, And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. 
and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. So when Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was speaking, it was God the Father speaking through him. He put God the Father put his words in the mouth of that prophet, his Son, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And he spoke his words to the people of Israel and to us. When we read this word, when we read the red letters in this Bible right here, okay, it is God, the Almighty God, speaking to you. And if you have heard his voice, then you have believed his word and you have begun to serve him. You see? Why have you begun to serve the living God? Because you have heard his voice. You have heard his voice. There's no other reason why you would be serving the living God. If you hadn't heard his voice, you wouldn't be following him. You see, but you're following him. Why? Because you have heard his voice. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's go on in verse 7. Then Jesus said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. The sheep did not hear them. When the Mormons came to your door years ago, like they came to my door, did you hear them? You might have listened to them for a little bit, but did you hear them? No. The Mormons came to my door many years ago. They left me a Book of Mormon, and I didn't even know the Lord Jesus Christ. This was back in 1993, 92, 93. I didn't know the Lord Jesus Christ. I hadn't been born again yet, but I knew that the Book of Mormon was not the Word of God, and I threw it in the fireplace and burned it up with no fear. And I wouldn't have done that with a Bible because I feared God, even though I didn't know the Word of God. I feared God, and I would never have done that with a Holy Bible, but I had no problem throwing the Book of Mormon into the fire because I knew that it wasn't of God. Okay, I didn't hear that. You see, when the Jehovah's Witnesses came to your door as a child, when the Catholics, when the Baptists, when, you know, when the Hindus, when the Buddhists came to your door when you were a child or when they came to you and you talked to them and they told you about their religion, did you hear them? Did you follow after them? You might have listened to them for a little while because maybe it sounded interesting or whatever until you finally realized, no, no, this isn't what I'm looking for. This isn't what that which is in me is seeking for. This isn't the voice that I am that my, that my inner being is waiting to hear. You see? But when the Word of God came to you, see, when the Word of God came to you, you heard His voice, didn't you? You didn't follow the strangers. The sheep did not hear them. I am the door, verse 9, by me if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Do you believe that? Why do you believe that? because you hear the voice of God. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Do you know this to be true? Praise the Lord. Why? Because you hear the voice of God. This is his voice. He put his words in the mouth of his son Jesus Christ, who spoke these things, because the people of Israel said, we don't want to hear his voice from heaven anymore, lest we die. So Moses, you go speak to him and tell us what he says, and we'll hear it and do it. And, and God said, they have well spoken all that they had spoken. Why? Because God had planned from the beginning to raise up a prophet, Jesus of Nazareth, to speak his words. You see, because he knew that people, that men were afraid to hear his voice because his voice is so powerful. So when you have read and understood the Word of God, when you have heard the things that Jesus Christ spoke, that John, Matthew, Mark, and Luke wrote down, then you, my friend, my brother, my sister, have heard the Word of God. See, you can hear. This is why Jesus said when he preached among the people of Israel, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Not everybody in Israel had ears to hear the Word of God, just like not everybody in the churches today has ears to hear the Word of God. There are many people, you know, if you're my brother or sister, you know that there are many people in the churches who profess to be Christians, but they don't obey the Word of God. And, they, and when they don't obey the Word of God, you're confounded and you're like, well, they're a Christian. Why do they do this? Why do they do that when the Word of God says not to? It's like they don't even hear, isn't it? Except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And if you're born again, it's because of this Word, you see, and you can hear. You can hear. And because you can hear this word, you're hearing the voice of God. Okay? 
Now, is God able to speak to his people? Does he speak to his people? Yes, absolutely. And if you desire to hear the voice of God speaking to you other than this word, then seek him. Seek him. And if you seek him with all of your heart, he will give you what you, what you desire. Maybe not in a day, maybe not in a week, maybe in a year, maybe in 10 years. It, it, you know, Moses was in the desert for 40 years before he was sent to do that, which he knew all along that he was called to do. He was in the, and Moses, the man of God, the one with, that, with whom God spoke face to face in the tabernacle. Don't you know that he was more than 80 years old when that happened, boys and girls, brothers and sisters? But he spent 40 years raised up in the knowledge and the, and the wisdom of the Egyptians. And then he spent another 40 years in the wilderness, in the backside of the wilderness, raising sheep seeking God and asking God questions and not hearing a single word from God until Moses was 80 years old and there was a bush on fire up on the mountain and the bush was not consumed and Moses went up to the bush to see why it was not consumed and then Moses heard God speaking. So don't be discouraged by the fact that the Almighty God may not speak to you in a moment just like when you speak to your friend Bob and Bob turns around and says, yes, may I help you? God doesn't speak to people like that. God speaks when he desires to speak, and it's not always when we desire him to speak. So is God able to speak to you in an audible voice? Yes, he is. He did it with Moses. He did it with David. He did it with Samuel. He did it with Paul. Uh, he did it, and he's done it with me. And He's done it with many of you out there, but there are some of you out there who may not have heard the voice of God speaking to you. Don't be discouraged by that, and don't think based on the devil's lies and attacks that you have not heard the word of God because you have heard the Word of God. And the reason that you're watching this video is because you have heard the Word of God. So be encouraged, my brother, my sister. Know of a truth that you hear the words of God, that you follow Him. You hear His voice and you follow Him. You didn't follow the strangers because you didn't know their voices. You see, their voice wasn't familiar to you. But when the voice of your Father came from heaven, you heard it. And that's why you follow Him. Blessed be the name of the Lord.